Welcome to Indiana News Desk. I'm Joe Wren. Some Hoosiers are worried their votes could be compromised because of Russian interference in elections. Missouri Senator Claire McCaskill confirmed this week that Russian hackers tried to break into her computer network in 2017. That's raising even more questions about the extent to which Russia will try to interfere in the 2018 election. As Congress considers how to improve election security, state and local governments are taking their own precautions. As Barbara Brozier reports, Indiana's system has several vulnerabilities. Summertime in the Greene County Voter Registration Office is relatively quiet, but that will change soon. With a competitive midterm election coming in November, the office will be flooded with potential voters and just as many questions. When we have people that come in to vote early, a lot of them uh, always make comments about security. It's something on the mind of not only Hoosiers, but voters across the country. Increasing concern about hacking of voting systems led the election board here to pass a resolution earlier this month to ensure elections aren't compromised. It puts into writing several protocols the county was already practicing, like keeping voting machines and electronic poll books in a restricted access room. You have to travel to the courthouse's basement and through two locked doors to find them. And even I couldn't get inside. There are only two keys to the room. We have a log book that the individual, whoever they go, whoever, they'll sign their name, the reason they were there, and the date and the time. Even when the voting machines are in use, they aren't online. Data is transferred from that voting machine to a standalone computer, and then those results are accumulated like on a jump drive or a, you know, that's transferred then uh, to a machine that, where it can be uploaded to the state. But that doesn't mean the county's election process can't be compromised. Scott Shackelford is chair of Indiana University's cybersecurity program. He says there are still plenty of vulnerabilities in Indiana's system. Unfortunately, no system is 100 percent secure. And even if these voting machines that we're discussing are air gapped, which means they're unplugged from the public Internet, there are still ways to interfere with them, such as through USB drives, for example. Several recent reports recommend Indiana take Take a number of steps to improve the integrity of its elections. The Center for American Progress gave the state a failing grade in an election security analysis released earlier this year. It says the state doesn't back up voting machines with a paper record and doesn't mandate post-election audits to test for accuracy. And a Pew Trust analysis from 2014 ranks Indiana 31st on its overall elections performance index, which assesses factors like data completeness, post-election audits, and ballot problems. So if you really wanted to attack Indiana's, for example, voting integrity, you wouldn't have to just go after the voting machines. You could, for example, go after websites that people go to to figure out where their polling places are. You could snarl traffic. You could shut down the power grid in a worst case scenario in certain core swing counties. The Indiana Secretary of State's office plans to use nearly $7.6 million in grant funding from the federal government to try and address some of those issues. Among other things, the money will be used to evaluate election computers and harden the network systems they use. The state also plans to deploy voting systems that can be audited and improve election night reporting. There's also a new network that allows election officials to better communicate about problems. We now have something called a voting ISAC, an information sharing and analysis center to help these election officials share cyber threat data and best practices across the country. But Shackleford says it's not enough to stop interference in November. He says that shouldn't impact whether Hoosiers decide to cast a ballot, because that's exactly what those trying to infiltrate the election system are hoping for. That's why in Greene County, they're doing everything they can to educate people before they cast their votes. And the issue of integrity is one they expect will continue to come up. We just try to reassure people that Indiana especially, um, it, there's some of the things you might hear about nationally, there's not available uh, to do in Indiana. For Indiana News Desk, I'm Barbara Brozier. Something ingrained in people's memories is the hanging chat incident in 2000 and raised an unprecedented number of questions about the country's election system. After that, the federal government pumped a lot of money into upgrading voting infrastructure, but that's nearly been two decades. 
Amid all the controversy over Russia, GOP leaders voted down a Democratic plan last week to increase election security funding. Republicans maintain that Congress has always fully funded election security and more money isn't necessary. But security experts warn just the perception of possible system vulnerabilities could be enough to significantly undermine public trust in the election process.